Hey, welcome back. It is Friday, October 1st, 2021. I'm Perry coming to you from beautiful San Diego. Uh, the mission here is to build a strong, trailerable 14 to 15 foot sailboat, which is 4.3 to 4.6 meters, leak proof, fully capable of crossing oceans. Now, here's three quick points why a small sailboat is perfectly suitable to travel on high seas. Number one, look at all the cases of large boats being dismasted after a rollover at sea. The forces on a tall mast with wire stays is incredible when it rolls into the water. A smaller boat with a short, strong, unstayed mast will meet much less resistance and can swipe through the water emerging after a 360 degree roll unbroken. In the 2018-19 Golden Globe race, out of 18 sailboats, there were seven knockdowns and five dismastings. 28% lost their mast. A large sailboat's tall mast cannot be built strong enough to endure these forces while still being light and functional, so the designers don't bother. Number two, the square cubed law. So basically the stresses on an object are gonna grow much faster than the strength as you increase its size. So double the size gives half the strength. Three times the size gives a third of the strength and so on. This is why small animals like cats and mice can be dropped from a second story window and they'll just scamper away while a unfortunate cow or horse will not have that outcome. A 15 foot hull can endure higher forces than a 36 foot hull. Think about two buildings and you construct them the same way out of maybe one inch plywood and two by fours. One's triple the height though. If you had to sit through a full gale in one of these, I'd rather be in this building than this one. Number three, running aground can spell the end for a boat. The larger the boat, the more likely you are to lose it in this situation. The larger your mass, the more damage is caused to your boat when you hit a reef. Look at Bernard Montessier's 40-foot steel catch or Bob Griffith's 50-foot cutter, Laura Decker's 40-foot boat, Bruce Maroney's 46-foot Amel catch, Team Vesta's 60-foot Volvo Ocean race boat. Uh, there are countless examples of sailors who ended up on reefs and were unable to move their boats back to deep water due to their high weight. A, a lighter boat with a strong bottom could be moved back to deep water using simple techniques. All these concepts are well proven by sailors like Blondie Hasler, Serge Testa, Sven Jurven, and Jan Kunet. I've been speaking to uh, Mr. Jurven about keels, and I've made a decision to change the design of my boat to not have a lifting center door, but to have twin keels. Some obvious advantages to this are that I don't have to give up space in the small cabin to a trunk that would hold a sliding centerboard. And also the boat will still be able to be trailered with the twin keels. Um, it could be possible for you to dry out the boat at low tide and do some kind of maintenance or painting. And you also won't have to worry about marine growth inside the centerboard trunk. You know, after a couple nights sleeping on it, I can't help but want to change this bow a little bit. And I'd like this cabin roof to be a little bit higher for a little bit better writing moment. And then bring this out into more of a U-shaped, spoon-shaped bow. All right, this is starting to look more like what was in my head. I've modified the sides, raised up that roof, totally modified the bow, and the bow piece up front is much more square than it was. Now I've made the bow more rounded instead of that big flat panel to make it look more like the uh, overhead view of the Maxi, which you can see here. Now I've got one more frame in, halfway up in the bow, and the first roof panel on. 
and this panel on top of the bow. And then we need these, one, two, three, four. Taking much longer this time because I can't just draw these out from the plan. I gotta kinda, I cut them out of paper and then I cut them out of cardboard once I got the measurements I want. You got these two side roof pieces. I've copied the curve of the coach roof here onto this cardboard and this is going to make the rear beam so the new rear beam will match the curve of the coach roof. Well I've completed the new model using CAD cardboard assisted design and uh, I changed the bow mostly. Actually every panel has changed somewhat so now maybe it's a completely new plan. Um, but as you can see, I rounded the bow, and this is called a scow bow, and I'll just read a couple points about um, the benefits of a scow bow or a rounded bow. Um, you can see these in racing boats like the Maxi 650, um, the boats that do the transatlantic races. This design has been around for years. Uh, you can find the examples from the 19th century and it became popular in the early 20th century. The basic principle of the scow design is to maximize hull riding moment. The beam is carried well forward, which means that when heeled, the hull lines are further outboard than with a conventional bow. This makes the scow design very powerful when reaching. Um, it has the added advanced advantage of large reserve buoyancy in the bow to prevent the bow from burying or nose diving when driven hard up the wind. Very important. Uh, this will keep you from uh, plunging into the wave in front of you and pitch pulling. The scow has the advantage of reducing the wetted surface and therefore to slide better on the water. In addition to performance, this bow shape also helps to keep the boat relatively dry and therefore more efficient. I'm going to put the sources for all those points uh, in the description. Um, also, you can see I totally redid the uh, doghouse. Half of you thought a uh, square doghouse, a rectangular doghouse looked good, but with rounded corners, half set of oval, and this is just that. The front half is uh, more of an oval, and the back is a rounded rectangular, and I think that looks perfect. I, uh, a round hatch for the main hatch is just my preference. I really like, uh, it's inspired kind of by Blondie Hasler's Jester boat. Um, and then you've got uh, portholes here for 360 degree view. This is really just high enough for your head to be in and to look around while you're in the seated inside steering position. Uh, then you got two more portholes on the side here and here. Um, I matched the curve of the coach roof to the rear beam and of course as I mentioned before this will be filled with um, a very light foam so it'll help um, for writing. As I mentioned I, just got, I decided to add twin keels instead of doing a dagger board and these would go about here. And since the sides of the boat are already pretty flat, they're gonna act as a keel in a way when it's heeled. These will provide lateral, lateral resistance. Um, but we add a keel here too, and um, maybe some lead ballast inside. And we'll just make it an extension of the side here. So one here, and then another one over on the other side. And I've also, put a skeg on here to uh, protect the rudder. So that's what I'm thinking about this week. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you leave a comment, let me know what you think of the new design. Uh, please subscribe and ring the little bell so you get notifications, leave a like. And uh, if you feel like contributing, contributing to the project, uh, there's links for that down in the description. I'll see you next time. Mr. Bordell, let's make all preparations for getting on the way. Thank
I sure like to carry things. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Oh, man. How do we get back to your station, or I'll have you shot from a mutineer? Well, shoot something! Uh -oh.